So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi, villains, and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast. It's Bank Holiday Monday here, Easter Monday in Ireland. And um, I have, I got home late last night from a weekend that I can sincerely will say I never, ever will forget. Um, an amazing trip to Birmingham. Amazing town, amazing people, amazing football club. Um the the weekend was 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 very surreal and and, and I was I was so proud and privileged and glad to be able to spend it as I say in some great company um over the course of course of the weekend um wanted to say a sincere thank you to absolutely everybody who shook my hand and and whatever else and and I'm I'm going to put my hands out there and I'm going to say I don't think you'll, I don't think I will ever get 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 used to that the, the you know the seeing the amount of people that watch the podcast and um really really grounding really humbling experience to be able to 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 see that and I, and I appreciate absolutely every single one of you people that uh you know took the time to say hello and say that you're you watch the podcast and that you listen and uh, and so on and so forth so um yeah i i, I really appreciate it, it my, my voice is a couple of octaves lower today um, and that'll tell you how good the weekend was and it was a fantastic weekend and we did some podcasts that we had to listen back to the morning afterwards to make sure uh because we were sketchy on on, on the detail um <laughs> the next morning when we woke up but look myself and patty are just two villa fans that, that that love to to i suppose talk about villa try and spread the word about aston villa try and um you know uh it's it, it's being 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 a fan of a club that isn't a perennial winner is difficult. Who am I telling? Anybody here who's from Birmingham that's listening to this will 100% understand, know, and empathize with that, with that statement. And sometimes when you're a fan of, of a club that isn't a perennial winner and you're, you're not living in the locality, you, it, it can be a plus and it can be a minus. Number one, I suppose, really, you know, you're not going to be bumping into fans of, um, of maybe local rivals that might be on the crest of a wave and might be able to rub it in. You guys all remember the Wolves mind the gap stuff that was going on. Well, the tables have turned in that instance now. But, but living over here in Ireland, you know, you, you're, and I've said it a couple of times before, you're always, you're, ne- you're never more than 10 feet away from a Liverpool or United fan here in Ireland. And, you know, sometimes you can kind of, you, you, see, you see teams that have had perennial success maybe take it, take it for granted. Um, but being over in Birmingham, and the reason I'm getting there, this isn't me having a crack off other, other fan bases or anything like that. It's just trying to verbalise my own thoughts on why I follow Aston Villa and, and why going over um, sporadically and, and getting to meetings like that does. It, it's, it can be quite quite emotional at times because, you know, you sit here and you enjoy it and you're, you enjoy a win on your own. And I've been enjoying the the, the run up to this game. You know, we've been on a, on a fantastic uh, non-losing streak and winning streak. And Unai Emery has us plowing up the table, which is absolutely fantastic. But to see the delight on everybody's faces when we were able to get down to the concourse around the McGregor statue. And you could just hear it like it was an echo around. Everybody was saying it. Oh, my God, I can't believe we're in sixth place. Sixth place may not mean an awful lot to some clubs within this league. But sixth place means an awful lot to us Aston Villa fans after what we've been through since 2016. And even before that, since Martin O'Neill era, I suppose realistically speaking, we haven't been a perennial, um, or we, we haven't been hitting the heady heights of, of sixth place since Martin O'Neill left the club. Um, we haven't been there consistently, probably since the John Gregory days. Uh, well, uh, prior to the Martin O'Neill time when we finished there three times in a row. Um Hopefully it is a big awakening for the club. Hopefully it is a big uh, stepping stone for the club uh, that the club can can continue to push on up the league for the rest of the for the, for the rest of the, the year. And uh, I suppose a real big litmus test is going to be going to be Newcastle at the weekend. And myself and Paddy will be back with a preview of that. We'll be back with a team sheet tantrum of that, and normal service will resume with post matches directly after the game as well for Newcastle. But 
I only planned on maybe doing a 30 second to maybe two minute intro for this vlog of our time over in Birmingham. Um, but as I say, even talking about it now and uh, in, in, in the cold light of day uh, on the, the Monday after the Friday and Saturday uh, of a weekend before, it's it's kind of really hitting me that, um, you know, you kind of have to make uh, getting over there is really special. You know, and, and you see, I've I've just watched Pete the Canadian Villains uh, um, vlog on it as well, and you know, I was there. My I started getting really excited for him because I know that feeling. I know that feeling getting over there for him to be able to to be able to to um to to kind of uh, tick the, not tick that box. That's a complete wrong phrase, but to be able to realize that ambition, realize that 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 goal after a forty three year wait. Must have been absolutely fantastic for him. I didn't get to meet Pete. I I actually wholeheartedly and solemnly do regret not being able to meet him, only for my f- stupid phone, um, leaving it in my jacket and not seeing his text message. I would have met him at the McGregor statue, and I apologise for that. But I did get to meet some fantastic people, uh, Max Stokes and Simon from the Villain Tour podcast, absolute legends. Dan Bardell, as you guys know, is a legend, the legend. Um, it was fantastic to meet those guys on the Friday night. Um, got to see Ty Bracey from the top of the the uh, the Trinity. He was in the lower Trinity. It's mad. It's mad. No matter what stadium you're in, you all you can always ring somebody and say, "Whereabouts are you? Stand up, wave." I see you. That's you. I see you. Myself and Bracey, we're, we're, we're doing that. And unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him afterwards, but um, we will be back and I'm going to make make sure um, that I bump into Ty. Uh, met the guys from the Up the Villa podcast. I I, uh, I caught Justin unawares. He was, I was queuing to go in for my ticket and he must be wondering, who's this small guy with, with a grey beard pointing at me? Um, but I met him afterwards with Ryan and with um, with Luke and uh, Top Guys and... Um, uh, it was it was fantastic to be able to meet those guys too. I'm the reason that I'm kind of stuttering and I'm stammering here at the moment is because I'm kind of going. Oh no, I'm after going into a, lo- a list of people I met, and I hope I don't forget anybody. Um, <laughs> we we spent some time in the in the in the Sacred Heart beforehand as well. We met some of Paddy's dear friends as well. Um, uh, there as, as well. So I'm going to kind of stop name checking now because of the fact that I'm just terrified I'm going to miss out on somebody. So for anybody that I did meet over the weekend. I really, really wholeheartedly appreciate it. Uh, to Brian Little as well, I, I, I appreciate taking the time to take a photograph and have a chat with us as well. Pity I didn't, uh, I didn't have the, the, I was too starstruck to to take out the phone to record a part of it. But um, as I say, we had a great conversation, and it's great to see the the legends of the club like Brian Little, um, you know, being as excited as the uh, as as us men, just just regular men fans on the ground. You know, it's uh, it, it's. It just shows that there's potentially something big happening. There's something uh, interesting happening at Villa Park because he comes out of that. Um, he, he came out of that VIP door and he was giddy. And I can imagine everybody else was giddy inside there. Why wouldn't you be? Because we're in sixth place. So thanks so much to everybody who made it happen over the weekend. Thank you so much to everybody I met over the weekend. As I said, met a lot of new friends, met a lot of lot of old friends. But the big thing about it is every single one of them had a Villa connection. And I want to keep that connection going for absolutely ever. And uh, who knows, might see you on a European European trip at some stage this season. But we got to get over Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester United, Brentford, Fulham, Wolves, and Brighton before the league league season is over. So let's not sleep on that. But in the in the interim, here's a little vlog of um, some videos uh, that I took over the course of my weekend away. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, as I said, thank you so much to everybody for 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 uh, everything over the weekend. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Up the villa.
Well, that's been a deadly uh, experience. Um, game wasn't that great, but <laughs> two, nil, two nil wins are two nil wins. Um, we've just raided the club shop and uh, we're off now to find From some, point? some points. Yeah, but all in all, I think it was. Uh, I think it was a pretty good, pretty good trip so far. Yeah, and uh, hopefully it gets better. And here's to a brilliant night. Speaking of points, we got nine points in a week. In a week, and we're now in sixth place. And uh, who's to say we won't go higher? Up the villa. Up the villa. <laughs>